that ocean contains more water than the Pacific, despite the fact that Ganymede is smaller than the Earth. Where you want to look for life is going to be in that last ocean level because it's in contact with rock. Did you know that there is a moon in the solar system so large that it could be considered a planet? The colossal Ganymede was first discovered by legendary Italian astronomer Galileo Galilei in 1610, and it was the first time a moon was discovered to be orbiting a planet in our solar system, other than the Earth. Although the discovery was significant for its time, little did Galileo know that Ganymede would one day become a bastion of hope for the existence of extraterrestrial life. Today, thanks to the use of modern telescopes, scientists have once again set their sights upon Ganymede in hopes of unraveling an ominous secret. What is this mysterious moon hiding beneath its surface? Let's dive into Ganymede and see what she's all about. Jupiter boasts a total of 79 moons, and Ganymede holds the third position among the Galilean moons, the four largest satellites orbiting the gas giant. The members of this group are Io, Europa, and Callisto. Ganymede stands out as the largest among them, boasting a diameter of 3,273 miles. To put this into perspective, Ganymede's size is 0.41 times that of Earth's diameter, and it surpasses the previously considered largest moon, Titan, by 1.2 times. Ganymede was initially perceived to be even larger than Mercury due to its thick atmosphere, which extends hundreds of miles into space. Despite having a volume 26% larger than Mercury, Ganymede does not possess as much mass. The key factor influencing this difference is Ganymede's lower average density of 1.9 grams per centimeter cubed compared to Mercury's denser 5.4 grams per centimeter cubed. This distinction arises from variations in their respective compositions. Similar to Europa, Ganymede features a robust surface layer composed of thick water ice extending 93 miles deep. Beneath this icy crust lies a colossal ocean of liquid water. The scale of this ocean is truly remarkable. In contrast to Mercury, which has minimal water and is rich in dense metals, Ganymede's abundance of water contributes to its lower average density. The ocean beneath Ganymede's surface is so extensive that it contains more water than all the oceans and seas on Earth combined. Estimates suggest an average depth of 62 miles, making it 10 times deeper than the deepest point in our earthly oceans. Hey spacers, look away from Ganymede for a second and click that subscribe button and bell button to stay notified of new and awesome space content. And now, back to Ganymede. Ganymede's composition reveals that it is composed of 50% rock, with the remainder being water and trace, amounts of metals and other ices. This alignment with classical mythology, where Jupiter, or Zeus in Roman mythology, claimed Ganymede as a cupbearer for the gods, seems fitting, given Ganymede's substantial water content orbiting Jupiter. Intriguingly, Ganymede possesses an atmosphere containing oxygen However, the possibility of life on Ganymede, despite its abundant water and oxygen atmosphere, faces some challenges. Notably, the oxygen atmosphere on Ganymede is very thin, estimated to be between 0.2 to 1.2 micropascals. This is approximately 100 billion to 500 billion times less than Earth's atmospheric pressure at sea level. This thin oxygen atmosphere on Ganymede would make it impossible for humans to breathe. While Earth has demonstrated the possibility of ecosystems thriving in lightless ocean depths, Ganymede presents challenges 
that may hinder the development of life. The vast depth of its ocean raises concerns because the water at the bottom is likely subjected to immense pressure, potentially reverting to ice. In contrast to life in the deepest parts of Earth's ocean, which can thrive near geothermal vents, the thick ice layer between Ganymede's core and its ocean makes similar conditions unlikely on this moon. Europa, Ganymede's neighboring moon, is often considered a more promising candidate for the potential existence of life. However, recent evidence suggesting the possible salinity of Ganymede's ocean could significantly alter our understanding of its interior composition. Models propose that a salty ocean might result in multiple layers separated by sheets of ice. In such a scenario, the innermost layer could potentially be in contact with the rocky core, raising the intriguing possibility of life existing there. Beneath Ganymede's ice and water lies a particularly puzzling phenomenon. The moon generates a magnetic field. This discovery, made in 1996 during the Galileo spacecraft's flybys of the moon, has left scientists without a clear explanation. The presence of auroras in Ganymede's tenuous atmosphere serves as a significant indicator of its magnetic field. What's particularly intriguing is that, during an extended study period by the Hubble telescope, these auroras displayed less wobbling than expected. This behavior is likely attributed to magnetic friction within a salty water ocean beneath Ganymede's surface. A magnetic field is crucial for a celestial body providing protection from solar radiation, a key factor that allows life to thrive on Earth. While Ganymede's magnetic field doesn't fully shield it from radiation, residing within Jupiter's potent magnetic field and radiation belt still subjects it to significant radiation exposure. Ganymede's surface registers about 5 to 8 rem, a level that could severely impact human health within just two months. Nevertheless, this radiation exposure is comparatively lower than that experienced by its neighboring moons in closer orbits. The mystery surrounding Ganymede's magnetic field adds to the scientific curiosity as conventional explanations based on a hot and molten core similar to Earth's don't seem to apply to this moon. Despite being smaller than Earth, Ganymede's core, based on its size and composition, should theoretically have cooled into a solid mass, inhibiting the movement of electrons through convection and the generation of a magnetic field. Interestingly, none of Jupiter's other moons exhibit a magnetic field, making Ganymede the sole moon in the entire solar system with this feature. The explanation for this phenomenon remains elusive, but scientists are exploring Ganymede's unique relationship with Jupiter and its neighboring moons, focusing on a process called tidal heating. Ganymede follows an eccentric orbit around Jupiter, completing roughly one orbit every seven days. This eccentricity means that at certain points in its orbit, Ganymede is closer to Jupiter than at other times. When subjected to a strong gravitational force, an object tends to stretch in the direction of that force, with mass being pulled in the direction of gravity. This rhythmic stretching and contracting generate heat due to friction within Ganymede. This process, where tidal forces create heat through friction, is termed tidal heating. On a larger scale, the cumulative effect of tidal heating contributes to the maintenance of Ganymede's internal heat, potentially preventing its core from cooling entirely and allowing for the existence of a liquid layer. This sustained internal heat, induced by the gravitational interactions with Jupiter, may offer a plausible explanation for the Moon's unexpected magnetic field. To make things more interesting, Ganymede has entered into an orbital resonance known as a Laplace resonance with two of its fellow Galilean moons, Io and Europa. This intricate resonance manifests 
as a precise mathematical relationship. For every one orbit of Ganymede around Jupiter, Europa completes exactly two orbits and Io completes precisely four orbits. This meticulous configuration is not a random occurrence, but rather a result of the gravitational influences of the moons on each other, as the entire system endeavors to conserve the momentum generated. This orbital resonance imparts a continuous gravitational stress on Ganymede, stemming from the gravitational pulls exerted by its neighboring moons. The possibility of tidal heating playing a role in maintaining Ganymede's liquid core, thereby contributing to its magnetic field, remains a subject of uncertainty among scientists. This phenomenon could potentially explain the intriguing features observed on Ganymede's surface. The Moon's surface is characterized by large dark regions, covering about one-third of its surface and lighter regions, constituting the remaining two-thirds. By analyzing the number of impact craters on these sections, scientists have deduced that the dark regions are older due to their higher crater density. In contrast, the lighter regions exhibit fewer craters but showcase impressive long ridges and grooves, some reaching up to 2,296 feet in height and spanning thousands of miles. While the formation of these ridges is not yet fully understood, one proposed explanation suggests that tidal forces may have stretched Ganymede's surface during a tumultuous period in its ancient history. This same tidal force, if responsible, could have played a role in warming Ganymede's core and preserving its magnetic field. Regardless of the cause, Ganymede's magnetosphere has been crucial in unraveling the Moon's composition for scientists. Scientists have successfully confirmed the existence of Ganymede's subsurface oceans by measuring the areas where auroras appeared in the Moon's atmosphere. These findings were obtained without direct exploration of its surface. The mysteries surrounding Ganymede remain, and there is hope that the Jupiter Icy Moon Explorer mission will provide answers to these lingering questions. But JUICE is not expected to reach Ganymede's orbit until at least December of 2034. Until then, all we can really do is speculate on what makes this massive moon so different from its neighbors. What do we think spacers? Could Ganymede host life after all? Please share your thoughts in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe for more new and awesome space content. Thank you for spacing out with us and see you next video.